Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Ali Reza here and in this video I'll cover arrays in UE5. This video is targeted towards beginners and it's a simple explanation of arrays and how and when they are used. In the previous video we talked about variables and got familiar with them. What variables do is to store different kinds of data and then give them back to us whenever we need them. Arrays are basically a type of variable that let us store multiple variables inside one variable. The way you can think of an array is that it's kind of a list of variables of one type. For example, let's say that you have 5 boolean variables. With an array, you can list them in one variable and use them whenever you want. Keep in mind that you can make arrays for similar types of variables. For example, you cannot have an array of a boolean, an integer, and a vector. Now let's make one and see how it works. Just make a normal variable and name it example array. Then here in the details tab, hit this little arrow here and now you can change your single variable into an array. Hit compile and now here you see that you can have multiple booleans with different values inside it. They have their own index so you can access them easily and using this little arrow here you can insert, delete or duplicate them as you wish. Pretty much every variable type can be an array. For instance, let's make a string variable and then change it to an array. Now you can have different strings here with different text inside one single item. Alright, next we are gonna look at how exactly we can get these variables and use them in our code. Let's add an event tick so the code runs on every frame and the print string to print the values on our screen. Here we can see that we cannot connect our arrays directly into the print function. We need a node in between so it can read the array properly and give the data to our functions. There are different types of middlemen here and I'm gonna explain a couple of frequently used ones and see what they are capable of. Let's add some names to our string so we can give them to the print screen function. Let's go with Kyle, Mike, Rose, and Kim. Okay, the first thing we are gonna look at is how to get the elements we want from our array. Just drag a wire from the output, type get, and select get reference. Plug it into the print screen, and here you can choose the elements based on their index. For example, index 2 is rows, so if I put 2 here, we can see that it will type its element, which is rows in this case. If I put 0, you can see that I will have Kyle here. Okay, next we are gonna look at how we can find an item in our array. Let's disconnect the get mode and now let's add a find mode. Here I can search for the text and see if it is in the array or not. If it is found in the array, its index will be our output, which is an integer as you probably have noticed. If I search for rows, it can find it in the list and then gives us the index, which in this case is 2. If I go for Kim, it will give me 3 and if I go for say Ted, which is not in the list, it will give me minus 1. Okay, next thing I'm gonna show you is how to find the length of your array. We basically want to find out how many elements this array has. I'm just gonna drag a line and search for length. As you can see, it will give me the length of the array as an integer. If I have, let's say, six elements, you can see that I have six right here. Okay, let's continue with the next important block, which is contains. What it does is that it checks if a text is in the list or not. If it can find the text in our list, it will output a true value and if it cannot find it in the list, we will have a false output. As you can see, the output pin is red, so it's a boolean and in order to be changed into a string, this node will appear and do the job for us. For example, if we search for Kyle, which is in the list, we will have true and if say search for judge which is not in the list we will have false all right now we want to look at how to insert an item into our array 
for example let's say that your character has found a new weapon and you want to add it into his inventory which is an string array just drag a wire and search for insert let's add an element to our array and now what we want to do is to add ak47 to our new element which has index number four As you can see, this one has executable links, so let's execute with our event tick and then print a string. The index we want to be printed is index 4, so let's use our get node with index 4 and plug it in. The chain of events here is that on every frame, we will add an element to our list, which is ak47, and then using the get node, we will type it on our string. The next thing we are going to look at is how to clear our array. It is pretty straightforward. Just make a clear node and then let's get the length of our array. Right now it has a couple of elements in it, but after the array is cleared, you can see that the length will be zero. For example, let's say that you have a couple of guns in your inventory and when you get killed, you should clear your inventory and drop all of them on the ground. Using this function, you can do it easily and clear your inventory instantly and spawn it in the position where your character dies. Yeah, and that's it for this video and this is how you can make and utilize arrays in your project. Here when you type array, you can see all the functions that allow you to play with your arrays and get everything you want from them. I cover some of the frequently used functions here, but there are a lot more that can be done with the arrays. Fortunately, they are pretty straightforward and simple to understand. And if you get the idea about the arrays and their overall functionalities, you can use these guys here easily like the ones we covered in this video. Yeah, and that's it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.